Hey guys, Rob from the Offered Tiny House. Current date, time, temp. And fairly decent outside. Okay, better angle. So, anyways, guys, um, if you followed my Facebook posts um, here on the Offered Tiny House, uh, the Facebook group, or my profile on Facebook, you know I had to go into the ER and I'm gonna explain everything and uh, do that here for you now I'm still kind of tired so I'm gonna just kind of lay back and chill a bit if you guys don't mind so anyways ow oh um so, if you guys have uh, caught up on all my videos, or s s continuing to follow my videos, um, basically, Mother's Day, Mother's Day, I got a pain in my left side. And it was kind of curious because I've never had such a thing before. And I got it after eating some fast food. Now, I'm going to recap that. Um, my brother came down for Mother's Day to visit, stay over. Um, however, with the sickness still going on and... A lot of businesses still shuttered. Food options were pretty limited, and we normally treat my mom and the whole family to a nice um, bought dinner, right? At a restaurant. Now, uh, they wanted Chinese food. Uh, both my parents and my brother. I don't normally eat Chinese food, but I can handle fried rice, so it's fine. Fry rye. Fry rye. Anyways, um, so that day before my brother showed up and uh, came for the visit, uh, I went and got my parents. Um, I treated them to Mr. Sub. So we used a coupon, got my parents fed, and then, because normally uh, we have to hold my mom over until my brother gets there, because he works midnights and he has to come later on in the afternoon, <laughs> like late, late. So uh, when he arrived, about around dinner time, basically. <laughs> Um, they phoned around for Chinese food on Mother's Day, and all the restaurants were too busy to accommodate us. They told us, as soon as we can do anything, it's 10 o'clock at night. Well, that's not going to happen. So, um, what my mom ended up doing was eating the other half of the sub I got her from lunch, for Mother's Day, which was all right. She loved that. Um, and then when my brother arrived, I, we went out looking for a place to eat, and their choices were pretty bare. A lot of places were closed on Mother's Day. Um, not only because of that, because also because of the sickness and probably short-staffed and whatever. So we ended up going to the fine dining restaurant of Burger King. I tried, uh, my brother wanted me to try the jalapeno cheesy bites, so we did that. I ate two of those, and she, my mom had one of those, and he had the, the rest. And I hadn't had a Whopper from Burger King and forever, so I ordered a Whopper with cheese and no onions. And I got a poutine with it instead of the fries. Now... Um, 
I got about three quarters of the way through the burger and about not even a quarter of the way through the poutine before everything went downhill from there. I don't know if I was poisoned or what, okay? So I had to work the next morning, so I thought I could tough it out. Um, but anyways, <clears throat> spoiler alert, this, this video is going to be long, it's going to be detailed, and possibly disgusting. So after getting through the meal, uh, I didn't get through the meal, I got partially through the meal and then threw it out because um, I had to go to the bathroom five times within a half an hour. Um, yeah. So something wasn't right there, and I felt ill from there on out the rest of the night. But I had to work in the morning, so went to work, toughed it out, and it was absolutely hell. I had allergies going on like I do now, all snuffed up, sneezing, snozzling, <laughs> not fun. And eventually my body started to shut down on me at work. I got extremely dehydrated and on the bottom step of the base, the customer's basement, I kind of sprained my ankle because, um, yeah, I was uh, running on fumes as they say, when you're dehydrated and sick. So I'm assuming I got some kind of flu slash food poisoning but anyways I worked through the whole day toughed it out we were able to take the next day off which was nice to recover a bit I recovered a bit it was good <clears throat> then we worked the next day after that and then things started to get bad again Continual pain in the left side. Never had that before. Um, it's allergies, fever, whatever. I don't know what I had. It was insane. And then, I'm going to say, I don't know the days exactly, guys, but <clears throat> that, that night, I woke up at 3 a.m. and... I had to go into the ER, the emergency room. Now, I'm the last person in the world who goes to their doctor to bother them over this, that, and the other thing, okay? Um, they're busy people. They have important jobs to do. I don't go see a doctor for every sniffle, scratch, scrape, whatever, right? Okay. So, um, I went to the ER, which is, I never do, ever, okay? Four in the morning, going to the ER. What's happening currently and been happening for the last year and such, year and a half, or two years now? <laughs> well, the sickness. So, I put the mask on, go in all messed up. They had it, uh, they had like this special check-in thing at the ER where there's a list of symptoms and so I claimed I had a fever and I still had the abdominal pain, obviously, in the left side. <laughs> I don't know if that's your abdomen or not, basically, but that's what I told her. And so they said, okay check in, take a seat. So that I went in, they took my blood pressure, they asked me what was going on, go to the waiting room, we'll get back to you. Okay. Now, I didn't get into the ER until about 9.30 that morning. So 4 a.m. to 9.30. So in between that time, I'm sitting there in the waiting room, Partitioned off. All the seats are partitioned off by like plexiglass. And everybody's kind of spaced out with masks on. Sitting there. Now, 
you guys realize I'm definitely ill at this point. I have my mask on so I can barely breathe as usual. <laughs> and that's just fun. So this is the sickest I've ever felt in my life. And I didn't know what was going on. So, the girl, uh, the nurse that took care of me, she's very good. Um, uh, I basically said, can I get something for the pain? Because this is getting crazy. So, <clears throat> she kind of took me back. And I didn't, she said she gave me Tylenol, but I do not remember eating Tylenol because I chew pills and medications, guys, if you don't know. I know it's disgusting, but yeah, because I can't swallow pills, that's uh, whatever. But um, that never happened, but she, as we were talking, she's like, well... Why don't I just run your lab work? We'll take two vials of blood odia. And she also checked for a fever with her ear thermometer. Um, I didn't have a fever. Though I sure as hell felt like I was burning up. And in the picture, if you look, I was completely red. Okay. Now. Um, I am officially considered a lightweight. Because when she took out two vials of blood for my lab work, and I did a urine sample as well, they told me, okay, just go back to the waiting room and wait as they process my blood and my urine. Okay. So I'm going to say five, within five to ten minutes after that, I got real sick, like woozy as in I can't lose a whole lot of blood without passing out so that's what I mean by me being a lightweight okay and that was horrible so I was like all right girl no I went to the receptionist and I'm like um can I have a wheelchair because I think I'm about to pass out and you guys probably can't lift me off the floor so yeah so i went back to the seat and waited there the receptionist got a hold of that nice nurse again nice nurse came out and i got into the wheelchair she rushed me back into the er threw me in a room and i waited and uh they wired me up and everything to their machines and they kept the er about 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Actually, it's probably like 55. It's It was freezing in there, guys. I, I don't know what the point of that is. But, oh my God. And then they expect you to put a gown on, which is nothing. It's like a thin bed sheet. So I put the gown on. Undress, put the gown on. Get into bed. They hit. They throw me a blankie. At least it's something. And I'm just laying there all messed up. Now, during uh, my time in the waiting room, I was so deathly ill that I texted my parents and my brother saying last goodbyes. Okay? That's how messed up I was. I thought I was done for, guys. That's how awful I felt. Okay? Now... And I could barely text as is when I was going through all this. So anyways, I was kind of keeping in contact over texting as much as I could handle at that point. So what the nurse did, the nurse in the ER, which was a different nurse, uh, she asked me if the other nurse that took my labs instead of giving me the Tylenol um, gave me a Tylenol. I said... I never got it. <laughs> she just took my blood. <laughs> so, okay. Because I would have remembered chewing a Tylenol, guys. It tastes like crap. Okay? Makes you want to gag. It's 
throw up. <clears throat> so I would have remembered that at least. So she's like, she's talking to the other nurse that admitted me. She's like, I thought I gave him a Tylenol. And then I said, no, I never got it. And I don't think they either believe me or they thought I was really messed up or what. But the new nurse gave me three pill, three white pills and she said it was ibuprofen. Okay, so I chewed those up. I told her, yeah, I'm going to chew this. And she says, oh, gross. And I said, yeah, thanks for the water. <laughs> so I chewed those up. A little while later, it started to kick in and I was feeling better, a tad better. And then eventually, the doctor saw me. The doctor was good. He was in his 50s. I told him everything, what's going on. I told him everything. I said, did I possibly get poisoned by isopropyl alcohol? And if you guys know what I'm talking about there, that has to do with my medicine making of the RSO. Rick Simpson oil and if you don't know anything about that don't worry because the doctor said absolutely not he looked through my two vials of blood and urine says was not poisoned by isopropyl alcohol or anything of the sort <laughs> okay and he also said my blood work and urine are actually perfect no diabetic no high cholesterol no craziness they found or that you know they can tell a lot of information from blood and urine so uh, he he considered me very well even though i felt like i was dying okay now i'm explaining to the doc what's going on i'm po we're poking prodding around my body here and it was right here on the left hand side and he's like well there's not much there other than your bowels but I said, I think I was food poisoned or poisoned. And he said, well, normally, 99% of the time with food poisoning, you will be vomiting and diarrheaing. I didn't do either. Okay? Now, that had me a bit confused and concerned, okay? So, because now, and I said, well, am I constipated or something? And he says, no, because you're still going. I was still going, but I was going in smaller amounts. And the feeling in my body was feeling like I have to go all the time almost. But I really didn't. It was a very uncomfortable feeling. Um, so he was, uh, the doctor was very good. And he's, we talked everything over and he's like, well, an x-ray is not going to do anything for us. Uh, the only thing that would do anything for us would be a CAT scan. But he said, um, just a heads up. If you do get a CAT scan, guaranteed down the line, you will be getting cancer. And the reasoning for this, he said, is a CAT scan gives you about 10 times more radiation than an x-ray. So you're guaranteed to get cancer. And I said, oh, yeah, let's not, uh, let's not go there just yet. And he agreed. And so we kind of made up an agreement there that... Um, I would, I would monitor my condition for a week and then if it didn't improve or got worse, then I would go see my family doctor and consider the CAT scan. So, yeah, so th like with all that information, I felt better, but I was still concerned because we really didn't pinpoint what was going on with me, okay? So, I texted my dad because there's no way I could have drove home. Um, and he picked me up 
and it was really I was really pissed off because I was supposed to work that day with him and I kind of let him down but it was kind of an emergency deal so he understood and so I came home and because I was in a hospital in an ER and with the sickness going on I took very strict precautions to try not to infect my parents or bring anything home with me back to the house. So when I got home, I threw absolutely everything into the laundry. I took a sh big shot of colloidal silver and then I jumped in the shower and tried to completely, you know, deep cleanse myself just in case you know what I mean okay so all is good that procedure worked well and no I didn't bring anything home with me so that was good um, and then I got to thinking well you know what I'm gonna take a probiotic because I have all kinds of supplements so I took a probiotic and at this point my stomach and my guts are just making all kinds of weird noises and I'm horribly uncomfortable right I'm not eating I feel god-awful still um, okay so I took a probiotic and what I also did was because I was paranoid where I knew I wasn't poisoned from my medicine, the Rick Simpson oil from the ISO. Um, but as precautionary, I used a small amount of RSO and applied it to my skin as opposed to eating it. That way it got into my blood screen, blood, uh, bloodstream without being eaten. And it does that passively through your pores over your skin. So it takes a little longer, but it does. And that does help with pain, guys. Just let me tell you that, okay? So the next morning I wake up, slowly getting, slowly feeling better, okay? Now my dad is forbidding me to go to work still. So I didn't. And I was kind of like, just kind of taking it easy, milling around. I actually was, uh, chatting with high tech guy Stu, my buddy there, and he can confirm all this. And I was helping my mom out a little bit of stuff and stuff like that. Okay, so that could that showed you how well I was kind of coming back. <laughs> and um So, I wasn't eating, I was uh, doing the probiotic thing, okay? Now, the problem is, I still, we still really don't really know what's going on. Though the probiotic, after I took the first pill, I only took one pill a day, because that's what it says. My stomach and my gut stopped gargling and gurgling and making all kinds of noise, okay? So obviously it had an effect and I did feel better the next day. So from there on out, I took a probiotic once a day. Now, here's the gross part. The poison was slowly coming out of me and when I went to the bathroom, guys, nothing but a yellow bile. Yellow. Scared the heck out of me, okay? <clears throat> but I figured the more of this stuff that gets out of me, the better I'm going to feel. That's exactly what happened. So over the week, I took a probiotic slow and I slowly I was slowly eating stuff like I'd eat fiber 
because fiber goes through your guts and kind of cleans out the walls of your guts as it goes through, which is a good thing. And that's kind of what I wanted and needed at that point. But I was taking it extremely slow. And I got to the point where uh, the day after that, I was ready to help my dad go back to work. And that was kind of a horrible experience because I, when I am at work, guys, I'm busting butt. I'm not one of these guys that's sitting here at a desk le just lollygagging around. I have a pretty active job, let's say, and I was running on crap sleep, crappy feeling, and no food, but putting in a heavy load of work day. Now that day, all I had was a probiotic, and the weird thing is, I ate a banana in the morning for breakfast, and I was so full after eating a single banana that I didn't eat for the rest of the day, which is very bizarre, but that's how messed up I was, okay? So... Continuing on, um, more yellow bile is coming out of me, okay, slowly but surely. Probiotic seems to be doing its magic, and I'm going to be staying on the probiotics, by the way, until I'm fully 100%. But whatever hit me, guys, was absolutely poison, I, in my opinion. Yellow bile is not normal, okay? So, fast forward, here I am now, guys. I'm feeling 95% better. But it took a week plus to get here, okay? Now, the other thing I discovered while at work, while sick, I was drinking two bottles of water, just pounding them back at work, okay? And I was still completely dehydrated somehow, okay? So there was something going on. So I figured sometime today, I'm gonna go to the drugstore and I'm going to buy a crap ton of this product called Emergency. And it has vitamins and electrolytes in it. What are electrolytes? Electrolytes help you hydrate your body and help your heart work and everything like that. So I'm going to buy like four boxes of this stuff. It's probably going to cost me $100 because the hyperinflation is going full on bore with all the prices that you see around. Um, I was talking to somebody actually about a window air conditioner similar to the one behind my camera at the off-grid tiny house, 5,000 BTU unit. They've gone from $100 to $200. They've doubled in price because of the situation the world is in right now. And I was in absolute shock. And wow. So anyways, I'm going to continue to take a probiotic a day. And I'm going to uh, continue to eat very slow, very healthy. Okay. What I did was I actually made some oatmeal up with honey, cinnamon, ginger, turmeric, and a little bit of dark chocolate all mixed in. And that's what I ate. And as a fiber, because the oatmeal I buy, guys, is organic, has no flavoring whatsoever, so you have to cook it. It's not like the instant oatmeal. It's the actual cooked kind. 
So I add all my ingredients in to flavor it to make it taste good. And it seems to do the trick and it's all healthy stuff. So I ate that and I was okay. And it filled me up for sure. Um, Cause usually guys, you guys know on me and my channel, I used to pound the food back. But not with what was going on with all this, I'll tell you what. Now the other thing is, I have come down from 240 pounds to now 217 pounds. And guys, how did I do that without exercise, without change of diet? Well, that was the RSO. And I proved that a while back in one of my other videos because I took RSO for two months straight, once a night, for two months, and I averaged a weight loss of 10 pounds a month, okay? And that kind of scared me when I hit the scales. So what I did was I paused taking any RSO for two weeks, and then I monitored myself, and yeah, my weight came back up. So I knew, obviously, it was the RSO doing it. So I was like, oh, cool. So I went back on it. Same, same deal. But now it's getting to the point where I think I'm going to take a good break from the RSO after everything I went through. Because, just as a precautionary, because I don't want to lose too much more weight. Because, you know, 200 pounds is probably pretty decent for a healthy weight for most people because let's face it I'm not in no uh, I'm no action star or anything like that but uh, we're just gonna cool the RSO for a while I have plenty and it definitely benefited me but just until the situation is back to normal we're gonna cool it Okay, because it's probably not a good thing to have your body do rapid weight loss like that. Uh, it was even worse when I was, I took RSO the one night and had to work and still felt awful and took, couldn't eat. And I had like no energy, guys, and was dehydrated at the same time. That was like the roughest work day of my life, period, hands down. So, yeah, because your body's like, okay, your metabolism's through the roof, but you're not eating anything. So you have no calories coming in. You're also burning calories at the same time because you're busting ass at work. And you all still feel like crap. So, extremely hard on the body. And I don't want to keep doing that because that's not going to lead to anything good, in my opinion, okay? So, Rob has been through the ringer at the off-grid timing house. And today I will be, um, today I have a day off. Oh, wow. When do I ever get those? And I'm going to take full advantage, go to the drugstore. Um, probably this morning, uh, later after the, making these videos, pick up uh, those electrolytes, as I said, and hopefully that will improve my entire situation on top. And I'm still going to continue to take a probiotic a day because it absolutely helped my situation. So guys, if you have any, if anybody has anything like this out there, this is what I did. It worked, and if it can help anybody out there, please use it. I'm no doctor. I'm just telling you my story and what I went through, okay? So, it was quite the week, and I haven't been here in a week, and this was my first night over at the Tiny House. This is the next morning, guys, because I didn't do any filming last night. I just came here after work rested, relaxed, 
chilled out. And now I'm talking to you guys. Yeah. So I wanted to make this video to tell you what happened with my whole health scare situation. And I'd like to thank also all the people and friends who reached out to me for support, thoughts and prayers and everything. Because guys, I literally, I was so ill that I texted my brother and my parents last goodbyes, okay? And I'm the type of person who never goes to the hospital unless it's absolutely serious. And this case was absolutely serious. And wow. It was, uh, it was something else, I'll tell you what. So, you can probably hear that I'm still all stuffed up. And yeah, that's allergies that have been ongoing since the very start of my ordeal. So that always, you know, that's just another thing to throw on top uh, to impact the body. It's tough. It's real hard on the body, okay? Yeah, tough, tough, tough. So anyways, guys, that is the health scare story. Uh, I hope this information helps somebody. Uh, I survived, barely, in my opinion. And I would like to get back, in, back to eating uh, the foods I used to eat, but I'm going to take it extremely slow. And I don't want to go back to the hospital at all. No fun. So, I'm working the rest of the week, as usual. Gotta stay healthy. But I did enjoy this day off because I got to sleep in a little bit, which I never did because I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> but I had to catch up on videos for you guys to let you know what was going on with me. So, yeah, that's what's going on. But while I was away at the tiny house, from the tiny house, ill, everything was cool here. Uh, no issues. It didn't rain either, uh, so I'm waiting on rain to see if the first flush system will actually work this time. If it doesn't, we have plans, if you've been following my videos, plans to correct that. So thanks for watching guys, and uh, that's it for now.